So I came from a really small town called Campus Gasing, um, where there's like 8,000 people who live there. Um, and I moved for my undergrad to Toronto, which is like a population of like 4 million people and it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I quickly found out that the comforts of home, the things that I was used to, um, had suddenly disappeared. I'm used to like being able to do like a walking tour of my city, like my town I guess, in 45 minutes and that's if I'm walking slowly. I'm used to being able to just like go to Walmart all the time and it not being like an issue and like I can do all of like the shopping I need to do within an hour. Uh, but when I moved to Toronto, uh, my closest like, grocery store was 20 minute, like a 20 minute walk away and the nearest Walmart took 50 minutes to get to by bus and I had to switch buses. Um, so everything that I was used to having around me was suddenly gone. Campus Casing is a very like pro-nature town where um, like people, like, they go hunting, they go fishing, they spend most of their time outdoors, everybody goes camping. And I thought I would miss that if I was something that would be ripped like apart like, out from me and when I went to Toronto. But my campus was essentially in a protected like wetland. Everything is just so close. Nature isn't as far as I thought it was gonna be. I think it was like a very drying experience for me because I expected everything to be just concrete always. And it was very concrete, very like glass building, skyscraper, the CN Tower. But it was also the trees were still around. Like it's something that they still value, which was unexpected, I think. Mm -hmm. You see those are like more round like a a cow or a horse yeah and this is pointy with two dots at the back that's a bull okay typically so it's a bull and a cow so home is a really interesting concept i think um in the sense that i like cap is home in the sense that i grew up there um mm -hmm. But Toronto is home in the sense that I did my undergrad there. Like, I grew up so much. Yeah. Um, and, like, going to back to Cap is, like, it's just, life is slower. But, like, in Toronto, like, there's so much to do. And the pace of everything is very, like, you always have to be doing something. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're alone, which is my favorite part about being in Toronto. Um, there's this phenomenon of, like, getting lost in the crowd almost where you can be at like Young and Dundas Square. And this happens in, uh, in Times Square as well. I've been to New York and this is the exact same feeling. Where there's just crowds of people just like flooding around you and you feel so small in this gigantic sea of people and concrete and glass. The time kind of starts skewing and just everything slows down because everybody's so fast paced and they all have places to go, but you don't. So you can just take it in and just, mm -hmm. It's a very like bone chilling experience, but simultaneously one of my favorite parts. This is like a very specific example to cap. Um, like whenever you go hunting or fishing. So hunting, you know, you're, you're in the forest and whatever, and you're, you know, you're looking for moose, whatever. You're living your best life. Um, and you, like you hear the gunshot or whatever. And like they've, they've killed something. Um, and then suddenly, like the leisurely pace of, yeah, we're just gonna go out looking for moose, changes completely. Like now it's time, like you need to like cut into quarters, you need to like drain the blood, you need to bring it back in town, you need to hook it up. Like it's this entire life that just, it flips. You go from relaxing, camping, and then it's not that anymore. Like the next day everybody's gone. Like it's done, hunting season's over. Like you have this mentality of, outdoor life super slow super fun we can all enjoy it and all of a sudden it's like bam something happens and we gotta do something yeah which i think is like really interesting because like my favorite part about going home is all those like relaxing activities where we're just like in the bush and we're just like you know going mm -hmm. hunting and like we're just gonna go fishing and then all of a sudden it snaps mm -hmm. and everybody's brought into action i think that's that's a very like jarring experience very like yeah uh, the juxtaposition is really interesting you know, like having such a slow activity that just changes the second that like i guess a life is taken mm -hmm. which 
it's kind of different than in a city because like in a city everything's so fast paced that you know if something happens it's already going there's concrete and cab there's nature in toronto but ottawa does something really funky with it it's simultaneously a small town but also a metropolitan area like the nature doesn't stop for you yeah like in toronto nature is very like this is where nature is going to be and cap is like nature is everywhere in ottawa it's just like nature was here and we figured out a way to be with it okay which i think is really interesting i find that ottawa has both it has good parts of like rural areas and it has bad parts and it also has good parts of urban areas and the bad parts i used to hate ottawa because of this i hated that it was trying to be too many things at the same time i didn't like the fact that it was trying to be urban like it had like all these like cool buildings and it was like we have concrete and also skyscrapers and also government but it was like oh so nature we're super outdoorsy and i used to hate that and then i figured out it was giving me the best of both worlds it was giving me the fast pace of toronto that i wanted mm -hmm. minus the traffic <laughs> But also the access to, like, the calming aspect of nature. Yeah. Like, I fell in love with Ottawa the second I stepped onto the canal. I don't know what it is about it, but it makes it almost magical. Ottawa has both the drive to keep growing, mm -hmm. while also, like, retaining the magic of serendipity, I guess. Yeah. And as much as I love the CN Tower, it's probably one of my favorite structures in the world. I see it just sticking out from everything, right? It's the first thing it tells you where you are. Yeah. That feeling, I have it when I'm skating towards downtown on the canal. Yeah. And I just see the parliament. Mm -hmm. It's the same awe feeling. Yeah. You know, like Ottawa has that grandioseness. You just have to look for it. Yeah. Which I think is true of everywhere. Seeing the mill light, like lit up is mm -hmm. also really cool. Not necessarily pretty, but it's still like the only real structure that we still have. Mm -hmm. Like we used to have the caps casing in, but that burned down. So like yeah. there's no... The marker yeah. of the town. Yeah, it's the mill. Sort of like the parliament or the CN Tower. Yeah, yeah. And I just, I think it's a really, really neat thing. There's, there's something to be said about finding your place in the world. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of good places and bad places and places that are fast-paced and places that are slow-paced. Um, but I think you talked about home earlier. Like yeah. You talked about home a little. And I think home is wherever you can find the time to be, if that makes sense. I just, I just think that wherever you can find a place to be, no matter how fast-paced it is or how slow-paced it is, you're allowed to make yourself at home with it. So, no matter the dichotomy of rural or urban areas, if you can find the time to just think a little and be alone by yourself, um, you find find good things in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah.